Well, um, this is a little bit less intimidating than a room full of people, um, but I guess I'll do a little introduction to the speaker series. Um, this is a program that started years ago and we brought back, I believe two years, um, two years ago, where we invite either local builders, makers, community organizers, um, people doing just really cool, inspiring stuff in the world, um, often local, often from other places as well, to come and um, share what they're up to in the world, share what they're making in to inspire people um, in our community. So now being able to have um, it broadcast live on Facebook and having it be more available for people um, through Zoom is kind of awesome to expand the reach of um, the message of what is going on in our community. Um, and Ross, I'm really excited to hear more about Mad Over Path because that's something that I've already enjoyed and know a bit about. And I know it's gonna be uh, coming through our campus soon enough, uh, which I'm very excited about. So um, next week, this is our first one, every week after um, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., same time, um, same Zoom link, also gonna be broadcast live on Facebook. So um, keep your eyes out for those other events as well. And Ross, I will let you take it from here. Great. Uh, oh, thank you. actually, sorry, yeah. one more thing. <laughs> um, since this is a webinar format where people cannot um, lend their voices to the conversation vocally, um, there is an option to ask questions. So at the bottom of your screen, um, where you can see um, several different options, there's a Q&A button. Um, so all the people that are watching this can ask questions um, through that format and I'll keep track of them. We'll probably ask them at the end just so it's a little bit easier um, to get through the presentation and then go from there. But please do ask questions um, using that Q&A. And um, if anything, you know, just any question, ask it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ross. Yeah, and I'll try to keep an eye on this Q&A box. I'll try to like, see it in the corner. And if there's anything that's relevant to what I'm talking about that makes sense just to, to tackle right there, I'll go ahead and do it. Um, but I might, not, I might just get carried away and not see questions. So sorry if I don't see it. We can get them at the end. Um, so cool. Thanks for the intro. Uh, thanks for having me here. In your in your house, I guess, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the Mad River Path, which maybe everyone here has been on a part of all of it. Um, we've got currently about 11 miles worth, and I'll, I'll get into that here in a minute. But I'm going to start a screen share so you can see a little presentation that uh, I put together. So hold on one second; it should work. And share. There we go. Is that coming through okay, Rachel? Yep. Great. Awesome. So here we have uh, the West Greenway with Scrag Mountain in the background, that kind of iconic peak there that you can see from pretty much everywhere in the valley. Kind of like to think it's like our Mordor of the valley, always kind of keeping an eye on everybody. Um, and of course, our town forest and, and Waitsfields up there too, uh, Beaver Pond. Um, there's some trails, of course, up there. Um, so this is pretty one of the most used sections, so I'm sure it looks pretty familiar to folks. Uh, so the path, 30 years ago now, um, there was this vision that was started. Uh, this was just after or about the time I was born, so it's it's been around for a little bit, this vision. You know, one continuous pathway from Moortown to Warren connecting the four towns of the valley and, and we're getting there. There's definitely been a lot of progress. Um, in, Rachel, can you see my cursor on this? I'll assume that you can. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear an answer, but that's okay. So if you see my cursor here, you can see more town up here at the top right of the map than down here, Warren. And as a crow flies, we're talking about uh, 11 miles down the valley um, and We'll talk more about specifics momentarily. So this is what it looks like today. We've got all these different little sections, um, some of them longer than others, some of them loops, 
Um, down here in the south, we have the Warren Path, of course. Um, going a little bit farther north is Riverside Park up along the Sugarbush snowmaking pond. Over here on the west, we have the Millbrook Trail, which is one of the first sections actually, uh, along with the East Greenway, which is, is not currently um, a path, but we'll talk about in a minute. And we have this whole section from uh, LaRue Swimming Hole that goes up in the Austin Parcel, this whole heart of the valley, which is downtown. Um, connects to a lot of different businesses and it lets people walk uh, basically from business to business. Um, then you come up a little farther north, we have the West Greenway, which is near uh, where small dogs used to be, um, and then a loop around Mad River Park. Um, we can talk more about these later on. And here's a, um, a snippet, a little close up of each one of them. Um, and all of these that you can find um, now online, this is the first year everything's been really accessible in, on an interactive map online. You can either access it at the Mad River Path website, madriverpath.org, and there's a, um, a maps page where you can go and check all this out. Or you can go to trailfinder.info, which is a partnership with the state of Vermont um, and some other groups who have free, you know, you don't have to pay anything. You can just go and check this out. And then there's uh, thousands of miles of trails around Vermont and a couple other states, I think New Hampshire and Maine, that you can check out as well. Um, you can download files and check out all the details. So that's that's trailfinder.info if you want to get more uh, trails beyond the valley, but it has most of the trails in the valley on there as well. Um, so here's, I don't expect you to read all of this, but this is just a kind of a highlight of our timeline over the last 30 plus years. So in 1988, um, at a one meeting, essentially, the, the Mad River Path and Friends of the Mad River, from what I understand, were created out of the same meeting. Um, and then not too long after that, they kind of split into the Mad River Path Recreation Association, which then a couple of years later became Mad River Path Association. Um, but before it became an official 501c3 nonprofit, the Warren Path was the first path that came to be, which is our southern terminus right now. And soon after that, it was the East Greenway on Elwyn Neal's property and the Millbrook Trail, which is from uh, the Swanson Inn all the way up um, to where it's co-located co with the Catamount Trail west of the uh, German Flats Road. So then we had uh, these incremental additions over the years. Um, and then the organization itself had some great development. Um, first full-time executive director was hired in 1998. Since then, we've had both full-time and part-time. Um, and now I'm full-time as well. And I didn't introduce myself at the beginning. I'm just realizing now. Um, but as Rachel said, I'm Ross Saxton. I've been the full-time director since July um, of last year. Um, I've lived in Waitsfield with my wife and now my three and a half week old son, Alder, um, since uh, well, four years ago, we moved here into Waitsfield. Um, I can tell you more about me later if you want. Um, but back to the um, you can see there's a trickle effect of new sections over the years. So there's always been some steady progress uh, over the decades, few decades. And we've had um, a really strong board of directors who are very active. Uh, and a lot of them have been around for, I think, 20 years, maybe more. And we've had some great new additions as well of directors um, on the board. And, you know, there's always the challenges. Like you can see Irene damage. Of course, that was a big challenge for the entire valley. Uh, but with the community support, uh, got through those repairs. Um, and I'm not going to read everything off of here. If you want, email me and I'll, I'll send you this. You can, you can look at it. I'm sure there's a lot of additions that could be added here too. I'm sure, um, I think Mac Rude, who's our board member, on the year. And I'll go to the next slide here, if it lets me. There we go. So just a little bit about Matter River Path, the organization today. Uh, like I said, there's one full-time executive director. That's me. Um, we have a seasonal trails manager. If you've been out on the path, I'm sure you've seen David Hodgson's smiling face. I'll show you a picture of him later on. He's out there building bridges and clearing trees and boardwalks, and he has a great engineering background, so he makes sure that all of our infrastructure is really solid when it goes in. 
it doesn't hurt that we have um, some architects and other engineers on the board as well to help us out. Um, we currently have 13 board members. Uh, our, our charter allows us up to 15, um, but currently we're, we're doing well with 13. Might have one or two more soon. Uh, we have between the data uh, we have over 50 volunteers from the community, and I think that gets close up to 100 some years, depending on the projects going on. Uh, we have about 400 financial donors uh, who, who donate some money every year, which we're a community supported organization. Uh, so it's really important that we have the community's buy in for this. I don't know why I didn't add this because it's incredibly important, but pop should be also that we have close to 100 businesses that support us. Uh, most of whom are in the valley, some of them are outside the valley. Uh, but they support us through just a donation because they want to see the path supported um, with just a check or whatever, um, or they become a dash, or they donate products for the Mad Dash Silent Auction, which raises in, in the normal years, you know, another five thousand dollars just in the auction alone. Um, so the Mad Dash is an important. Uh, Part of who we are too. And we have about 500 participants who come to that. Um, so keep an eye out for some news on the dash. You know, hopefully we can hold it this year. We're anticipating on, on holding it, assuming things kind of get back to, to safe. Um, we'll see what happens with COVID, but um, we have some pretty cool uh, plans for the dash this year. Uh, and we're hoping it's going to be uh, as good as ever. And this would be the 25th annual dash, assuming it all happens. Next one here. I keep trying to hit the keyboard, but it doesn't work. There we go. So here's our, our mission. And the, the things I highlighted here, because I think is the most important part of our mission, is that we're community supported. You know, our mission is to build with pathways and trails, connecting the four towns. Um, the whole idea behind this network is it's not just there for people to walk on period. You know, there's there's a lot more to it than that. It, it does a lot for the community. Um, it helps foster a healthy community. And, and the most important part here is that it connects the people, the businesses, and the special places of the Mad River Valley. There's a lot of awesome people who live here and visit here. There's a ton of businesses. There's uh, more than 50 businesses that are with 100 yards of the current sections of the path. And then there's just limitless special places that that I'm sure together we could list hundreds of what we would call a special place here. So we'll get into that more in a minute. And let's see. So one thing I like to think about is, you know, what if um, what if the organization never existed? You kind of think about, and this, this is what I do too when I, I write a grant, for example, it, it really helps you put in perspective of, of what you do and, and why you do it and without you why um, what would the community be like without it and you know I think the, the community would be not quite as vibrant and I think people wouldn't have as many places to engage which I'll, I'll go into that with some stories in a minute but that's one thing I always like to keep in the back of my mind is you know if we weren't here what what wouldn't what wouldn't happen um, and that that's actually kind of helps motivate me to to, to forge forwards um, as we do. Um, and here's just some, we'll go through some quick pictures here. Um, here's just to give you some visuals uh, of what's of what the path is all about. And this is our newest infrastructure. Uh, I'm sure everyone's seen this, the Carroll Road Boardwalk that uh, Charlie and David and some volunteers worked so hard on last year. Um, you know, Alan Lumber right down the road behind the, from where the picture was taken. I actually think Charlie took this picture um, just the other day. Um, they, they gave us, you know, from Allen Lumber, we, they gave us a great discount and we purchased all the lumber from them. And then Mad River Metalworks, you know, we try to keep as much local as possible to, to invigorate the community as much as possible with our own money um, that, that we raise. So the railing inserts there are actually from uh, Andrew Spencer and his team at Mad River uh, Metalworks. And then of course, looking the other way around, here's the boardwalk in front of Lawson's, which is fun to walk to all the time. Um, this is uh, Robin's place there, the Mad River Taste Place with uh, Bisbee's right there and Three Mountain Cafe. And uh, ta uh, you know, Taste Place is a great fun place to go to. And this is a nice little crosswalk 
course. Then here's the West Greenway in the wintertime. People out skiing, just to give you some more visuals. Um, here are my cousins checking out from, from Maryland, checking out the, uh, the Sugarbush Pond Loop. Of course, they loved it. Um, and getting back to the connections part, that, 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 that is the whole soul, I would call it, of the Mad River Path. It's the whole reason we exist is, like I said, people, the businesses, and, and the special places. And I would say, maybe reword it a little bit, connecting the people of the valley and the visitors to the valley to the businesses and to the special places. So connections, here's, here's some people here at the farmer's market. You know, the, the path comes into the farmer's market two different ways. So tons of people walk to the farmer's market to, to be connected with businesses and, and other people. Um, and then here's um, some kiddos enjoying the boardwalk as well. Um, and then connecting the businesses, I said a minute ago, there are more than 50 businesses within 100 yards of the path um, within the valley. And all, you know, all kinds of businesses, pretty much all the businesses in the valley actually, I think are within 100 yards or pretty close to it. Uh, it's about, what, 75% or 80% or more of the businesses in the valley are, are that close to a section of the path. And then the special places, you know, you can define a special place wherever you want. Um, but there's just too many to list. Um, you can all have your own definition of what a special place is. It could be as small as a bird's nest or it could be as large as, you know, a swimming hole or, or a grand view of the entire valley. This, uh, by the way, is uh, the view on the right is from the top of the Vista Trail, which comes off the Boring Path, which is a steep trail, but it's a, it's a fun little climb. Um, and going to what uh, the real soul again of, of what the path does and who we are is, you know, what, it, what does it mean to the people who use it and who want to use it? The whole <clears throat> idea is to have the path as the communities. You know, it's not my path as the director. It's not any one board members or anyone sponsors. It's it's everyone in the community who who owns this path, um, and we want people to feel that way. Um, so here's just a few stories on what it means to various people. You know, some people like to relax. There's so many spots to make a connection to the valley, just in that immediate surrounding. Um, you can experience nature in different ways. Here is a, a sign where I think this was on the West Greenway, where there was a mama turkey um, with uh, it's her new new little chicks running around uh, and she did not like people coming. So she was chasing people <laughs> around. So the path is very much engaged in nature and you can get lots of nature experiences out there. Um, random side note, I saw for the first time today, a turkey laying egg, um, which was kind of interesting. It was a really bad spot. I don't think it's gonna last, but it was fun to watch. And uh, I love having those firsts out in nature. Not that it was on the path, but I think a lot of people have first um, experiences out in nature. Um, on the path, you know, the, the people enjoy the path or go out on the path to enjoy time with other people, people who they care about or other people they just met, whether it's a business meeting or just cruising down in a little rain drizzle. Um, people have encounters with nature. Um, here we had some bees under there. Unfortunately, people had, uh, I think before this picture was taken, some stinging encounters, um, but that's all a part of nature. and. We, we take care of that as quickly as we can. You're out there, you're, you're out there. Uh, people have fun on the path. I like to think about all the kids who are given an opportunity of easy access just to get out. You know, this is right behind the Wastefield Elementary School. Um, by the way, each elementary school, Moortown has their town forest of trails right there, which is not technically the path, but we hope to get there and connect to it someday. You know, Waitsfield Elementary School, we have the Waits Way, one of our newer sections right there. Uh, Warren has the Warren path right next to the school and then the Faston Elementary School has their own little nature trail plus they have or help provide nature areas to the uh, to the local elementary schools and then of course Harwood you know as they get older they have their own amazing trail network out behind there and maybe someday we can connect there um, you know the path is a place for kids to learn in this case, learn about uh, why it's important to pick up your dog poop. I think they all learned a lesson there. 
Um, it's a place to observe nature. Uh, we do some work to restore the native vegetation. Here's the, the Austin parcel. So some people come to the path to actually do a little bit of volunteer work. So that's what it means to some people. In this case, eliminate some knotweed and put in some, some new uh, native plants. And this is a uh, part of the crew from the Intervale Conservation Nursery. We worked on this project with uh, Friends of the Mad River, Intervale Conservation Nursery and the Waitsfield Conservation Commission. Um, here was, uh, this is, my wife Elizabeth and me catching some supper from the path a couple years ago, right off the path. Um, I think she caught this. This is actually on our, I want to say like eighth or ninth wedding anniversary. So it's a special place for us to go to celebrate certain occasions and maybe catch some supper now and then. Um, it's a place for people to go to socialize, of course. The community. Uh, just here's a, one of the new kiosks going up, which was a project. Uh, that a lot of people I'm sure have seen all across the valley at, I want to say 50 different trailheads, something like that, that the planning district spearheaded with all the different partners in the Mad River Valley Trails Collaborative. Um, that are going up and gazebos and other types of infrastructure where we can sit and remember people who, who are no longer with us. Um, but had a meaningful impact in a lot of our lives. So I think that's a really important part of the path that I'd love to continue to, to increase um, with, with different bench features and other features. Uh, this is a duplicate slide. I guess I just wanted to remember what if we never existed, <laughs> but we do. So that's the important part. Um, so that was a lot of what, um, what the path means to people and, and what, a little bit of what we've done, but I want to talk a little bit now about where we're headed. And like I said before, the uh, Rachel, I think I'm getting a little bit of a, an echo. I think, I, did you take off mute? There you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Feel free to chime in though, if you, if you have something um, to contribute for sure. Um, like I said before, the, the path is for the community and we're here to, to continue to maintain and make more of a path and trails around the valley for what the community wants and needs. Um, and it's me being someone who has used the path a lot over the last four years and, and more when I was visiting before then, um, you know, I have an idea of what I like to do, but there's so many different diverse people in the valley who have different interests and one of the great things um, that especially that we got to realize about um, the path or I guess was emphasized during the most recent months while we've all been at the stay and home order uh, stay at home orders due to COVID-19 and having to uh, stay socially distant is that the path allows us to kind of stay open during mud season and it's a little bit wider than a lot of trails um, with some decent parking so in a lot of trailheads so we can actually get out there while we're socially distancing and while it's not the best trail weather out there so it, it's it's unique system in that we can stay open in some interesting and dire times kind of when we all need the path the most so uh to help inform me a little bit and to get a, a better pulse of what the community wants we did a survey recently i'm just going to share a little bit about that uh, with you now and how that is influencing what we're up to in going on into the future. Um, so here's some preferred, preferred spell wrong, sorry, uh, preferred path settings of what people want. So you can see there um, what people want the most. Um, and not saying that downtown access is not wanted, it's just saying that this is what other people prefer. And I think it's a little bit of a mix of what we have already done. We already have fantastic access to our town towns through the path system. Um, so I think some people are wanting to see these other things um, preferably as well. Um, so we're using this set of information here for our future decision making. Um, and then there's some more information about what kind of amenities and characteristics people want to see in a particular path section. Um, and then we asked how people uh, use the paths um, to get an idea just to make sure that we're having the certain amenities out there correct, um, or the certain um, way that the trails are built. So you can see people really value easy parking at the trailhead, you know, so, so we got that. We're gonna make sure that stays top of our list. Um, and 
one of the things that is most important about the path is that it is easy access. We have over 60 miles of non-motorized trails, I believe, um, in the valley. I think it's more than that even. Um, and a lot of those are pretty challenging and that's great. You know, it brings people in from all over literally the world to come check out our trail systems. So it's good to have diverse uh, systems and uh, folks like the Mad River Riders, for example, do an amazing job with trails of all levels um, for that are multi-use. Um, they have some pretty challenging trails, but they also have some very easy trails for beginners. Um, thing that the path kind of specializes in is that we do a lot of very easy accessible trails and people recognize that. So a lot of people of all kinds of abilities um, come to the path um, for flat and non-technical, although we do have some a little bit more challenging trails up there. Um, but the other thing that people really want to see are longer than a mile. So we're, we're working on projects where you can go out for more than a mile for new trails. Um, at Yestermorrow, um, there's a good possibility that um, one of the, the new trail loops up there is gonna be about a mile. Um, so that's pretty cool. It'll be a little challenging because you gotta go up the hill, but it's gonna be you know a mile or more. Um, so those are the big things there. Um, and you can see, you know, most people walk on the trails and go out to enjoy nature and there's a ton of dogs out there too which brings its own challenges um which we're working on of course trying to get people to pick up their, their dog poop and whatnot um, and keep their dogs leashed up which is uh, kind of a valley-wide rule so uh, we'll keep working with people to, to help follow those rules but it's important that people have places to to walk their dogs and, and do all these other things that they want to do out there um, and then this, we're curious, you know, if people just taking all factors away, otherwise, what's, what's the priority sections that people really want us to complete? Um, so you can see here um, what, what people really want to see completed um, as their priorities. So this is what we're working on. Um, you know, the original idea was that the path was going to be right along the river, but over the years, that's become clear that's not possible. Um, in every situation along every stretch. So, you know, we're keeping our eyes open, we're getting creative. Uh, we we're, we're, might have to go up off into the hill a little bit, which is which is fine. And we'll come back down as soon as we can closer to the river. Um, you know, this takes time. Um, different landowners have different preferences and, and different ideas of what they wanna do with their land, which is, which is great. You know, it's what makes um, Vermont and then the U.S. an amazing place. We have the freedom to do what we want with our land, um, but you know we're hoping that we can get people to uh, to see uh, the community benefit over time of allowing us to put a um, a path or a trail section through their land. Um, and a part of that too is helping people understand that it's not a one size fits all scenario. So we can actually cater it and, and be really flexible to what that trail and path looks like um, on their land. So we can we can do a lot of different things like shrubbery to keep privacy or route it in certain ways. So we can always uh, stay flexible that way. Um, you can see you work your work our way all, way all down the list there and three and four and five and six are kind of tied. But so we're working on all of these, but you know we're we're balancing what people's priorities are with what we think find is feasible and, and what's possible through the um, through the through conversations with landowners um, and, and we're, we're opening up our toolboxes and, and trying to get more tools in our toolbox um, to, to figure out how to accomplish our mission um, one other thing that is really interesting about the path um, one of the first things that I've kind of recognized when I came here as the director is that the, the path does such an amazing job with providing a place for people to go out and experience and enjoy the natural world. And I thought it might give me an opportunity and there's kind of a gap that I'm seeing of, of helping people engage with the natural world even further. So taking that next step of doing some more active uh, nature and conservation education. So before we went ahead and, and started doing that, uh, we asked people in the survey what they thought about that. And most people are said, yes, you know, 55% said, yes, we should do it. As you can see, 41% said, uh, sure, whatever, do it if you want. And then only 4% said no. And then even further, um, we're thinking about, well, what if we were to create some sort of community nature center, which we don't have here per se already, um, something that isn't quite like North Branch Nature Center, but a little bit, um, less 
uh, intense isn't the right word, but they're, you know, they do so much um, over there that we might be able to scale it back a little bit um, and still have a meaningful experience for people um, and not do this just as a path, but with partners. So we're talking with partners on, on how we might do something like this in the future. Um, so we have a meeting space um, for uh, community nature kind of events. So there'll be more on that later, but we're taking it slow and we're working with partners and we're making sure um, that a nature center or the conservation and nature education isn't eliminating or isn't harming the rest of our activities to complete the main mission of the path um, to, to complete it all the way across the valley. Um, just a couple examples of what we're up to with nature engagement. We're taking it taking it slow. Um, one thing is we partnered with the Madsonian this year. They're on Bridge Street. Uh, if you've been there, it's kind of a cool little museum about how um, new technologies over the decades um, it goes beyond that. Um, but we're trying to find the biggest trees in the valley. So it's kind of like a scavenger hunt when you see, um, I don't know if you're like me where you're kind of walking around and you uh, have a big tree that kind of catches the corner of your eye and you're like, holy cow, that's a big tree. Um, we're asking you that you measure it and send us a picture of it and some coordinates. And we're actually helping uh, get it all the valley's big trees in the state's database, um, which there's actually a state big tree database. And there's only one and it's in Hemlock. And I know there's some huge trees out here, so uh, we're, we're hoping people can help us out with that and have a fun activity while you're outside. Kind of gives you and, and kids a mission of going out and finding something that's really neat. Um, hey Ross, I have a yes. question for you. Yeah. How big is that biggest hemlock? <clears throat> the biggest hemlock? Oh, I, I forget. It's like 192 or 200 inches that, um, in circumference. Cool. <laughs> like that. I think it's like the second largest hemlock in the state or something like that. So let me take a, <clears throat> a sip of liquids here. I usually don't talk for this long. <clears throat> um, and I've heard that I think on Knoll Farm is a big elm. It might be the second biggest elm in New England. Don't quote me on that. But so, and I know like out in Ben Basin and other spots, there's just some enormous trees. Um, on public land too. So it doesn't have to be necessarily a trail. Some of them are right off the side of the road that are huge, but this is a fun way to go out, explore on paths and trails and just maybe do a little bushwhacking too. Um, but making sure that the trail you're on is open, of course, um, gotta make sure about that. Um, another idea or another program that we just started, another little little thing that you can do with kids and family or whomever is, is doing a bird bingo. So you can go to our website and print off this card and go out and and start doing this um, just for fun. You know, we don't have prizes this year. Maybe we'll do something next year. We have prizes and whatnot for like a random draw for whoever completes it. But, um, excuse me, these are um, a lot of birds in the valley that you can see just pretty much from anywhere. I think the hardest one is gonna be the American bittern, um, but there's a hint there where we've seen it a lot. <laughs> so I'd uh, love to see cards when people complete these. Um, and then again, the Nature Center, maybe, I don't know if folks know, um, this is Chris Rimmer over with the um, Vermont Center for Eco Studies. Um, this is up on Mansfield doing some bird banding. You know, it's, it's that kind of activity that we may end up being able to do here in the Valley um, to help with nature and science while, while educating kids and, and the public. Um, and now going back here to the, to the trails and kind of where we're at and, and where we're headed um, to continue to build the system to the special places um, and the businesses and different destinations. So you can see the purple is all our partner trails here. You can see uh, on the, all the way to the left along the ridge, I'm sure you can guess that's the long trail, tons of Mad River rider trails here in purple and some of the town trails. Um, the only thing I'm just realizing now is that on here is Scrag Mountain trails, but pretty much everything else should be on there. You can ignore that blue dot, that's my house uh, that uh, when I would, Took a snapshot of this and you can see the gaps in the network and one really important thing is connecting the existing systems together into a, a cohesive network so essentially you can park you know somewhere downtown we got to decide where the best spot for that is but somewhere near businesses you can hop on your bike or hop on your shoes gear shoes on or hop on your snowshoes and you can uh go you know especially if you're on a bike you can just go for a big loop around the valley. And then when you come back, you know, you're at a business destination to help with our local economy. So that's the kind of idea here that we're working towards. 
Um, so now you can see, I don't want to put a, a trail specifically through people's properties where we don't have a trail yet because we don't want to, don't want to anger anyone or, or think, make people think that we're, we're forcing trails through their land. Um, and also to help uh, with the idea that we're flexible. Um, we we want to get to point A to point B in a good way. Um, and this is, this is what we're, our current thinking is. And a lot of this isn't just coming from the path, you know, this is coming from Mad River Riders. Uh, there's this whole plan called the MRV Moves Plan, which Joshua Schwartz and the planning district was an integral part of. They, they really led the charge on that. A lot of this comes from that too, of, of how are we gonna connect these networks? Um, so you can see uh, a lot of these, um, there's a lot of arrows, <laughs> but it's there's a lot of stuff that's already started, a lot of progress that started. So I think we're a little closer to it than a lot of people realize um, and, and we're getting there like i said before we're increasing our tools in the toolbox um, so i think it's gonna come a little easier over the upcoming years as people um, realize that they really want to help us um, those arrows at the top right for example you know if we ever want to go up to the harwood trails that would be really awesome to connect up there um, one of them that i'm really excited about too is if you look over here on the left the one the big arrow heading up to the long trail we're really hoping to connect downtown Irisville to the long trail, the one continuous, one continuous trail. So we have the Millbrook trail and there's just a few, there's, it's actually really not that bad. There's a few connections that we need to make. Um, then we can get to Mount Ellen and then we can get to the long trail of Mount Ellen. So that's a pretty exciting project when these other public continuous pathways that we're hoping to build. And Rachel said before, we're, we're doing some work at Yestermaro, so uh, one of these arrows down here towards the, the south here is it's actually going to get uh, filled in a bit. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, a project we're doing this year as well. If uh, you see in Irisville, uh, it's probably kind of hard to see, but if you can see my mouse, there's this red like blob that's up here, kind of in the center of the map along that blue. That's a new loop that we're doing this year out behind the big pick and wooden wood. Um, on Chris Lamonia's land, he's letting us build some trails up through there. So that's the start um, of kind of a phase one to get up to that purple section to the north. Um, so that's connecting a section that exists. That's a trail up there. It's called Gumball. There's a couple others. Um, that's a current uh, system that we're going to connect, you know, right down to our downtown business area. Um, so we're pretty excited to help support the local businesses. Um, and that's that's what I've got um, for now. Um, I hope that gives you a good background of how we're, we're connecting the communities where we've been. There's obviously years and years of history that that we could go into, but I kind of selected what I thought would be the most important. Hopefully gave you a good idea of, of what we're up to, where we're headed. Um, but happy to answer any questions uh, at any, any time here, whether it's now or if you want to follow up, that's my cell number right there. You can, you can call that anytime. I'll answer if I'm, if I can't. Um, or I answer if I can. Um, that's my email too. So contact me anytime. Happy to happy to chat. We can meet up with some masks on too here coming up. It's just a reminder to folks in the Zoom meeting: you can ask questions through the Q and A at the bottom of your screen. Um, Ross, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about ways that um, people can get involved or um, ways that they can help support the path, um, which may be different than normal times, but um, yeah. I'm just curious if you could talk about that a little. Yeah, awesome question. Thank you. Uh, like any organization, when the economy is in kind of a slump, um, you know, we're going to we're going to be having some financial challenges, I'm sure, uh, at some point here, uh, especially, you know, looking at what businesses are able to do. We get a lot of business support, as I said before. Um, we're expecting a lot of businesses just aren't going to be able to support us as they have in the past, whereas maybe some businesses were going to be okay and are weathering things fine. Um, so but we're hoping that individuals, if, if they can, um, if, if they're doing financially well still, if they can support us financially um, with some donations, financial donations, um, that would be super helpful, um, of course. You know, any amount is amazing. We're community supported. Um, so we really rely on individual donations. Um, but we will be able to do some 
uh, some volunteering per usual. Uh, we're just gonna have to do it a little bit differently. Uh, for example, we can do some, we can get some help out doing some trail work and building boardwalks and bridges. We're just gonna have to do so without uh, sharing tools, for example, we're just gonna have to wash down the tools. So we'll definitely love help out on the trails this year as well. Uh, especially just raking, shoveling, uh, screwing in some boards, cutting boards. Um, I'm sure we'll come up with a good system on how to make it work. Um, but we definitely would like some volunteers. And my wife does um, infection disease control, so I can get all the proper guidelines from her to, to help out, uh, make sure that we're all staying safe. Because the last thing we want to do is put anybody uh, in harm's way. Um, does that answer your question okay? Yeah, that was great. Um, I also see um, someone was asking if there's a way to get a copy of the slides after um, sure, sure. they missed some of it. So I guess if anybody wants a copy of the slides, perhaps would it be best for them to just shoot you an email, Ross? Yeah, I can send over a PDF. Um, and I don't know, Rachel, is this going to be recorded or anything? Like, could they come back yes. and look live or something and see it? Yeah, so it is live on our Facebook, um, and we also are recording the Zoom so that um, by Friday it will be up on the Yes Tomorrow YouTube channel as well. Um, you can also check out some of the previous speaker series when we could gather in person. Um, we have lots of them recorded up on there, um, so it's, it could be a fun way to kind of go through the, the archives of Yes Tomorrow presentations in between the ones that we have scheduled coming up. Great. Oh, one other thing is that people can donate lumber if they want. Um, here's Trish, who uh, donated all in this picture here on the slide, uh, all this lumber, and we turned that, use it very quickly in the new board, uh, boardwalks and bridges up on the Swanston Inn Trail, um, the one that we revived this year. And I just picked up a whole nother truckload of pressure treated lumber that was donated the other day. So we really appreciate those. Um, lumber donations too. It helps with budget quite a bit. I um, mean, you can see there, there's David there in the middle. He's out on the trail every week, all the time working on it. So you can say hi to him. I also see um, Charlotte Potter asked if you could elaborate on the ideas um, behind, on the ideas? I, it says ideas behind wood and wood. The ideas behind wood and wood. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, that's a, uh, uh, class two wetland through there. Um, so we got permission, you know, we don't want to harm the wetland. So we're doing it in, in the way that's according to how the state allows us to um, put a boardwalk through there. So the, the functionality of the wetland will be maintained. You know, what we want to do with the path, last thing we want to do is, is harm the natural world and, and the functionality when we do anything. So, you know, we always double check with the scientists before we do anything. So we're putting about a 400 foot long boardwalk um, through there um, towards the solar panels. And then we're gonna climb the hill and do a loop up there of single track. Um, that's multi-use um, and come back. It should be about a mile all in all um, when it's all done there. So it'll be some switchbacks and some climbing, climbing turns and I'll kind of take you a tour of that property. There's a great view on the, what is that, the northern side of the property that you can look down into the valley and see Sugarbush from the power line corridor, um, and then you'll loop back down. Um, and yeah, if there's any other specifics about that, I'm, I'm happy to answer more. That's just kind of the general overview. Um, you know, there'll be a couple bridges up in there over the, there's a perennial stream and an inter intermittent stream up there. Um, I'm not sure if there's any other details that, that were wanted on that. I think that was a great answer. <laughs> okay. um, I don't know if anyone has any other questions. I don't see any in Zoom. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm super available. I try to keep myself super available and accessible. So if, if anyone ever wants to have, you know, uh, an off the live stream conversation, I'm, I'm more than happy to do, to do so. And under normal circumstances, I always like to go over to like Lawson's or something and and chat over some beer, um, but we can do it over the phone and we can crack around the beers at home, I guess. <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, Ross, for taking the time today. Oh, I see we have another question, actually. 
Nope, I have a thank you from Nick Eiley. <laughs> You're welcome, Nick. <laughs> All right, um, and oh, another question. Beth Sholkoff would like to know the life expectancy of the boardwalks. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, it depends on how wet they are. That can certainly change the, the PT or, or how long the PT can last. We always try to use PT when we can. Um, you know, it's a little bit more expensive, but it lasts a heck of a lot longer. I um, actually don't know exact answer to that question, but I think we can expect at least 10 or 15 years out of most boardwalks. Um, and a lot of that, and every piece of, of lumber is a little bit different. Um, the treatment ends up, you know, I, I'm not an expert on, on how it's all treated and, and whatnot, but uh, sometimes you get kind of a dud piece of PT that you need to replace. You know, it only lasts maybe a few years because it the chemicals don't sink in properly or what have you. Um, but over time, I think we can get a 15 years or more um, out of a boardwalk. Um, and some of it's probably gonna be piecemeal. Like I was just saying, you might have to change a board out here and there, but uh, PT lasts a while. All right, well, if uh, any other questions, ah, oh, here we go. Um, if someone is interested in having the path on their land, what can they do? Someone missed the beginning and wasn't sure if you've already covered that. Sure, yeah, you can get a hold of me. And if you can see here on the screen share, that's my contact info, rossamatterpath.org, or that's my number. Um, so let me know. Um, we can start conversation and, and see what you're thinking and we can combine efforts, fix our minds and see what we can do. All right, well, unless any final questions come in, <laughs> I'll thank you once again, Ross, for taking the time. Um, sure, yeah, no, this is fun. Thanks for having me. I like talking about the path. It's a, it's a fun thing. It is. I actually, um, I did a little research project in college about the economic impact on public hiking trails, and it was outstanding to see the impact of um, having recreation zones close to um, especially in, in smaller rural towns, um, close to their economic centers, really does a lot for community. Yeah, I think the last study that was done on the Blueberry Lake network of trails that Mad River Riders um, created, which is on um, federal land, U.S. Forest Service land, that brings in something like 1.8, give or take, million per year for the Valley businesses and economy. So um, like I was saying a little bit before, um, if we can bring some of that downtown and, and expand our networks, which the riders and, and the path and others are, are working on right now. I think we can um, enhance the, the economic viability of the, of the trail system right in the valley, right downtown. So that's exciting to think about. Yeah, super exciting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, well, um, as I mentioned before, this is gonna be recorded and posted on the Yes Tomorrow YouTube channel as well, um, as well as being live on Facebook. Next week, we have um, Beefer Roth talking about tree houses and some of the other cool tree form craft that he does. So that should be a really fun one. Um, it'll be that same time, also live on Facebook and also available through the same Zoom link if you tuned in that way. Um, and if anybody have, has questions, hopefully you have Ross's email. Um, and Mine is rachel at yestermorrow, yestermorrow.org if you have any questions about the speaker series. Um, we're hoping to be able to provide you guys with a lot of good stuff while you're still hanging out at home. So yeah, thank you everybody.